Howdy folks, welcome to Found Flicks. On this ending explain, we'll be looking at I Am Mother, a mysterious sci-fi thriller where after an event makes humanity extinct, a teenage girl is raised by a robot, but their bond is tested when a stranger arrives with alarming news. And it's starting to appear that the robot called Mother has much more sinister intentions than she was led to believe. Well, we've got yet another Netflix original on our hands, and generally that doesn't bode well for the film's overall quality. But I Am Mother is amongst the rare originals that actually doesn't disappear point. Despite an obviously limited budget and scope, the movie admirably tells its story, increasing the tension and questions about the world outside, as well as constantly twisting who the young daughter can trust. It's also technically quite polished, and with only a handful of actors, it still somehow works with its limited means, and presents an intriguing sci-fi yarn that comes together in a compelling way. I'm also impressed as they are able to make the mother robot feel like a real living character, all brought to life by special effects wizards Weta behind the Lord of the Rings as well as Krampus. Utilizing a practical suit instead of CG makes all the difference here. I can't understand why the admittedly abrupt ending leaves viewers with many questions about where things up in the end. But luckily, this is a case where all of the pieces of the puzzle to put things together are there in the film. The sign of quality screenwriting, which is always appreciated. So let's check out I Am Mother, breaking down the film's story, putting together the bigger pieces, and explaining the ending and what it means. Our story takes place almost entirely in the hot repopulation facility, where we learn there has been a catastrophic apocalyptic event that decimated humanity, which is what causes the facility to activate, seeing it is one day after the extinction event. The lights and doors were to life, and robotic arms complete the assembly of an advanced droid to care for the many unborn embryos stored there. 63,000 of them, in fact. More than enough to begin the repopulation of mankind. And the droid is there to raise them from infancy, acting as their de facto mother. She places an embryo into a fertile tank, and in a mere 24 hours the baby will be born. Once it's done cooking, she talks to it in a soothing voice, comforting the child, cleaning it and wrapping her in a blanket, and turning on warming parts of her body, almost like a mother bird does with her eggs, implanting the idea early on that mother is a source of warmth and protection. We watch as the child grows, only ever referred to as daughter, with the droid providing her with everything a mother would and more, being her complete caregiver and teacher. Yet the development program is slightly more advanced than the norm, because I still couldn't do origami now if my life depended on it, let alone if I'm like six years old or whatever. And over the years, there seems to be what could only be described as genuine love and care between the mother and daughter, even if one is a robot. The girl asks why there aren't more children, and mother explains there used to be more humans, but daughter hates humans based on what she's been told, as they've ruined everything. But mother defends us, saying that humans can be wonderful, leading her to ask, then why only make one? Mother takes her to the embryo room, revealing the massive number of ready-to-bake baby fetuses. And daughter longs for brothers and sisters, in fact a whole huge family, that it would make her happy. And the droid agrees this would make her happy as well, promising that eventually she'll get the big family that she desires. We then jump forward to 13,687 days after the extinction, the facility still only having one human. Yet the only girl that we see is a teenager, and things already aren't as they appear, because the number of days we jumped 1 to 13,000 plus after the extinction is just around 37 and a half years. Much older than this girl. Interesting. In her growth, daughter has become skilled at a variety of things, including being able to help mother with repairs, showing a much higher capability than the average teen. Though she is still learning, presented with complex moral decisions from a doctor's standpoint, including possibly sacrificing herself to save the others, all in preparation for an extremely important upcoming exam tied to the daughter's birthday, but daughter seems listless and admits to not doing the reading. Disappointing mother, who expresses it would be a shame if she didn't meet her score set from last year. And not wanting to let her down, when it comes to sacrificing herself, she points out she was taught she should be willing to experience harm to benefit others, yet questions the people she's saving, that they could in fact be bad people. So she would be giving her life for those that don't ultimately deserve it. Again, much higher level stuff than I was being taught in high school. That is some critical thinking and shit. I was like, oh, I'm gonna go home and eat some Cheetos and drink cream soda. That was my critical thinking. What kind of soda was I gonna have? We're later presented with how adamant Mother is about the outside world being unsafe. The power suddenly going dark one night. Daughter tracks down the culprit to a cute little mouse, 
but when presented to the droid, who doesn't even believe that it came from outside. She's unwilling to take any chances as it could be a carrier, and promptly incinerates it to daughter's horror. But she maintains that it's for her own safety, as the surface contamination levels are hazardous to her and her potential brothers and sisters. Though she does show a softer, more human side, actually cracking a joke when she's told that daughter remembered for once to put her dirty clothes in the laundry, showing us this is one extremely intelligent android, even able to evolve its personality to become more human over time. Impressive! The mouse's visit has made daughter more interested in the outside world, questioning mother if she might be wrong about it being dangerous out there, wondering how she could know without actually going out there herself. She responds that it would be too dangerous for her to go out there and would probably ultimately wind up getting incinerated like her little friend but she doesn't want her to be unhappy, asking if she has ever been wrong. And daughter can't argue with this, though she also has literally nothing else to compare to, which will soon change when an unexpected new person pays the facility a visit. Daughter hearing a faint knocking from the airlock, brazenly putting on a hazmat suit and opening the first door, approaching the outside one and calling out hello. A woman responds, saying she needs help as she's been shot, and daughter decides to open the door to see for herself, despite mother's constant warnings about outside. Opening it activates an alarm and mother is launched after the signal. The woman is, as she let on, an injured lady. Daughter granting her only access to the in-between zone, instructing her to put a suit on before she can let her in. The woman pleads for medical assistance and as mother gets closer, she promises to help but tells her to stay down, slumping just out of the droid's sight as she shows up. She's still pissed though, scolding her for potentially putting herself and the embryos at risk, and daughter apologizes, promising it won't happen again. Mother agrees, punishing her by sending her off to do that big exam after all this mischief, slotting 60 minutes to complete it as she leaves to decontaminate the airlock. Worried she might find the woman, daughter gets to her first, taking her gun before shaking her back to consciousness. About to remove her mask to drink water, daughter stops her, but the woman tells her it's okay, removing it to take a drink without incident. Also against everything mother has told her, and more questions are raised about what she's been told, asking how she's unaffected by the contagion. The woman, confused, asks who put that in your head, and it's starting to really look like maybe mother ain't always right after all. She sneaks the woman through the halls, hiding her in the furnace room, and scours the infirmary for supplies, making a mess in the process, hurriedly cleaning it up, hearing the clunky footsteps of mother approaching, and manages to hide as she passes by, to, uh-oh, the furnace room, to incinerate a mask found at the airlock, which is also where the woman is currently hiding, who flips out upon seeing the droid and flees. And when daughter tracks her down, she explains why, as there are apparently several other droids that look exactly like mother outside called dozers, who have been tracking down and killing any surviving humans. This idea confuses daughter, as she's only known mother, who based on her experience would never hurt anyone. Snatching the gun back, mother appears, and her hostile reaction fits in with what she was saying. Yet the woman doesn't really do herself many favors taking daughter hostage. Opening fire on the droid doesn't do much, grabbing her by the neck aggressively. Yet she was just protecting her daughter, as any good mother would do. And she relents when daughter says the woman is just scared and needs medical attention. And mother behaves, as we've seen, with compassion and kindness, offering to help, and ushering her to the infirmary, asking the daughter to leave to ask her some questions, like about the droid that supposedly shot her, and if she is on her own. Noting her wound is most likely infected, she busts out a huge ass syringe of penicillin, seeing this robot coming at her, and based on her already described fear of the droids, she doesn't trust that mother is really trying to help. She tries to calm her down, asking if there are others and that they could be in danger. The woman questions her, scoffing, oh, from what, a virus? Asking what she's told her daughter. And mother admits that she has guarded her from certain facts. A different kind of lying, you just don't tell the whole truth. But points out that if she was only interested in her dying, she could simply leave her alone, suggesting if she won't let her help, to at least help herself. Daughter confronts her about there being another person, which is in defiance of what she's been told. And she assures her that she's just as surprised as she is, and reaffirms that it is dangerous outside. When the conversation turns to potentially others in the woman's party, she offers to take them in, but she won't be able to find them without the woman's help. Naturally, the daughter knows she'll talk to her, and is further inspired to do so when finding a book in her satchel containing drawings of many different people's faces, including a boy that looks to be about her age. Ooh-wee. This spurns her to ask the woman about the drawings, but she's frustrated that she went through her stuff, wondering if after getting her trapped in this cage they're supposed to be friends or something? Daughter rebuttals, well, you are still alive, so maybe things aren't so bad here, and assures her that mother is not what she thinks, and that she has taken care of her her entire life. The woman begs to differ, as she hasn't seen 
what others like Mother have done outside, remembering them burning babies and starving families. But Daughter is steadfast that Mother isn't like the others. She's gonna need their help sooner rather than later, Mother indicating that her blood is now infected. And while she did finally take the big syringe, she waited too long to prevent things from progressing, and they will now have to perform surgery to remove the slug to save her life. She still won't let the robot near her, yet relents when Daughter steps up to perform the operation. Again, I'm like, this 18-year-old is gonna perform complicated surgery? Okay, that's kind of asking a lot. But she's perhaps not surprisingly brilliant, and even concocts the method to remove the bullet successfully, however painful the process is. More than enough to make her lose consciousness, waking up later in bed. Daughter informing her that her body has stabilized and that she will be okay after all. Patching her wound plus a TV dinner has convinced her that at least the daughter isn't so bad, admitting that she did right by her in the end, despite all of her reservations, but clarifying that it was her and not the robot that helped. She says she just did what anyone would do, but the woman retorts that she obviously doesn't know people. I'd like to, she innocently and hopefully responds, offering help to anyone else out there in her group. This leads the woman to finally spilling the beans about the others in her group, taking sanctuary in a camp called the Mines nearby, revealing what led her to the facility, saying she was on a run with another member in search of supplies, until they were attacked by the dozers. Jacob led them away, and his distraction allowed her to escape, conveniently winding up at the facility, showing drawings of Jacob and his wife in her book, and it was others at the camp who found the woman as a baby, taking her in and raising her as their own. Daughter again offers to allow them refuge here, but the woman argues that it's actually safer in the mine, suggesting that the two of them could go together. Awkwardly interrupted by mother entering, daughter lying to her about what they were discussing. Secrets and lies, girl. Even though she's beginning to not trust mother, she has troubling news about her new human friend, having matched the caliber fired into her with that from the woman's injury. And it doesn't match what droids use as for her story, mother urging her to stay away from the woman until she gets more answers as she might have been shot for a good reason. The time has come for daughter's big exam, which features a lot of specific personal and moral questions outside of general knowledge as well. And luckily she aces it, scoring even higher than previously, according to a proud mother, filing the exam away in a cabinet along with many others from over the years. She then presents her with a present for passing, a weird claw gun thing, even her not knowing its purpose, which is to pick the next fetus to be born into their family, a process effectively making daughter a mother in her own right. She's not sure who to pick, but mother assures her there are no wrong choices, selecting a brother specimen, APY09, sticking him in the fertilization chamber, embracing mother as his 24 hour countdown to birth begins. Everything seems back on track between the family, until as usual, the woman throws a wrench into things. When presented with the matching bullets, the woman asks if she actually saw the bullets with her own eyes, which plagues daughter enough to investigate for herself. And upon comparison, they are not a match meaning that mother was misleading her yet again. And the secrets begin to further unravel, unlocking an unmarked drawer, discovering files for subject APX02, and checking the embryo rooms sees that 01 through 03 are all missing. She's 03, meaning at least two previous girls were birthed in the facility before our current daughter. The file reveals the fate of her predecessor 02, her file marked failed on one side and more alarmingly aborted on the other. Probably not a good sign. Desperate to learn the truth, daughter scours the furnace for evidence, finding a human jawbone deep in the ash, pretty much confirming that due to O2's failure in testing, mother killed the child. Phew, good thing she passed, am I right? So now we know that of the previous children, O2 was killed for not measuring up, and also was the young girl from the opening scenes. Though this still leaves O1's fate unaccounted for. She's still devastated, having to come to terms with the mother she's known all this time's true nature, and rejoins the woman, telling her she was right about everything. Still upset, the woman assures her her feelings are totally natural and human, reminding her that in her opinion, that thing is incapable of having true feelings for her. It simply cannot as a robot, even though a lot of evidence seems to beg to differ with that. Deciding it's best to get help from the others at the mine to save the embryos from mother's grasp, the woman is ready to leave now, but daughter insists on staying until her brother is born the next morning, that night going to sleep with sweet dreams of that boy from the book Simon. The next morning, executing their plan to escape, 
gathering supplies from the infirmary, mother coming in right in the middle of it. And she plays it off cool, using the excuse of not being able to find formula for the imminent child. And mother shows her the specific right way to make formula, stopping her with an aggressive hand grab at one point, but it's only to make sure that she properly measures the ingredients. Things are getting a little tense with mother, and she notes that daughter's heart rate is elevated, as well as her anxiety levels increased, made pretty obvious when showing her the next steps, and daughter can't even keep a steady hand when pouring the water. She guides her through the formula making process, but when leaving grabs a woman's satchel and locks daughter in the room. Mother already was onto their scheme, playing back to the woman their conversation the previous night where they set their plans in place. She's defensive about her de facto daughter, debating why she would want to join the woman in her miserable life outside, rather than what she has provided for her, resulting in the woman attacking her with a piece of a bed frame, slicing an important tube, and mother gets momentarily glitchy, again grabbing the woman's throat, demanding to know the mine's location. She doesn't answer, and mother turns up the heat, jamming her fingers into her still fresh bullet hole wound. Luckily, daughter breaks free, setting off a fire alarm, sending smoke down, obscuring the hallways. And the two reunite, the woman saying they definitely for sure this time have to go right now. And at the moment, I'm in agreement with her. Their escape foiled when her access to open the door is denied just as mother arrives, deriding the woman's intentions as being selfish and only thinking of her own future, lamenting that her brother and family needs daughter. The woman again shows that mother is kind of right, taking her shiv to the daughter's throat demanding mother open the way out, which she does, telling her not to move as the two make it outside. And it's a desolate hellhole, dead trees, ever blowing wind, and earth like ash. Definite signs of something serious actually having happened here. Certainly some apocalyptic shit for sure. Their trek comes across new issues. When a massive drone flies over the area, the two hiding in a crop field and conveniently don't get caught, the drone passing them right by. The crops are in stark contrast to the rest of the landscape so far. And the woman explains that they showed up six months ago inexplicably, and that before then the air was unbreathable, almost as if the area was being redone from scratch in a better way than before. They make it to their final destination, the woman's home, amongst the wreckage of a ship carrying a bunch of storage containers, one of which she has made into her home. Ah, beachfront property. And the containers would certainly be a good source of supplies, yet where are the other people, the rest of her group, just like she said? And the woman reveals the truth, that she fled her group many years ago, and hasn't seen a single person since. And then when she left the group, they had gone mad with hunger, doing terrible things to each other. Daughter now understands that mother was right about her, only caring about her own future, realizing that she shouldn't have ever left the facility in the first place, having been completely duped by the woman who says it's not a sin looking out for yourself. But she just wants to go back to get her brother, already overtaken by her maternal instinct when selecting his embryo, and of course being worried about mother doing something terrible to him. The woman warns there will be other dozers in the area, but she is sure that she can handle mother. She tries to change the subject, saying they'll be better after some food. Wow, sounds great. I'll definitely be sticking around this place. She doesn't, venturing back on her own through the desolate zone. Arriving at the facility door, she finds it as described by the woman, flanked by a gang of the dozers, all aimed at her with intent to kill, until she asks to speak with mother, and they let her pass. Grabbing an axe and entering the facility, following her brother's crying to him being held by mother, she welcomes her daughter back to where she belongs, explaining to her that she is a better human than those who came before. Smarter, more more ethical and raised to value human life above all else, and finally reveals her hand in the grand scheme of things, admitting that she couldn't watch humanity suffer from their own stupidity and had to intervene to help elevate the species that created her. The dozer droids did indeed destroy humanity, but she has been rebuilding the world from scratch praising that it will be way better this time around, and again asking daughter to see the bigger picture, wondering if she has failed in her task, or can she become the daughter her family needs. Asking to hold the child, mother does so, calling him perfect, daughter rebuttaling that if he's not, she'll just kill her, like O2, that didn't measure up, saying she won't let her keep the baby, escaping the room, closing the door and breaking the lock, mother getting stuck as it closes, an explosion rings out from outside, it's the droid boys busting their way in, including a giant flame cannon beginning to melt away the outer door. Procuring the woman's gun from the locked drawers, she turns it on Mother, who warns that shooting her will accomplish nothing, as she is more than just her single body, a collective consciousness that controls all of the various droids. Indeed, it was Mother behind the entire extinction, and destroying her body won't do any good. Daughter is disturbed by Mother destroying mankind, but she argues their destruction was inevitable, and that what happens next is up to her, saying she made her into who she is so that they could create a new 
new, better society together. But daughter feels confident that she can do it by herself, that mother has already taught her enough, and she did refer to her as being special, asking for a chance to go at it alone, and mother gives in, caressing the baby's head, just as the droids are about to make it inside. She tells her she will always be her daughter. I know, she replies through tears, and suddenly the droids all stop their assault, mother raising the gun back to her own chest, and daughter fires, blasting her right in the CPU, and the droid is no more. Though since she technically is one with all of the droids, she merely moves her consciousness into another body, paying the woman a visit at her luxurious shipping container, where she's drawing a picture of the daughter in her book. Hearing a beep from her back, she discovers a device with a blinking light inside, obviously a tracking device mother snuck into her satchel, as she appears at the door, asking if she'd really let her daughter stay here, and derisively asking if she thought she could ever replace her true mother. She then asks the woman if she remembers her own mother, but she says nothing in response, which the droid finds interesting, considering that it's strange that she has survived so long where others have not. As though someone had a purpose for her. Until now, that is. Mother slamming the door closed and presumably killing her, though only hearing the gentle ocean waves crashing on the beach. Back at the facility, daughter holds her brother in her arms, beginning to sing the same song that mother did when she was crying as a baby, which immediately calms him down to sleep. She enters the embryo room, still filled with tens of thousands of unborn humans. Daughter with a determined look on her face, with the clear directive of becoming the new mother to all these new humans, and teach them just as her mother taught her. What has actually occurred here is exactly what mother was intending for her, and everything we've seen was a big test to see how she would react. To unpack the full scope, we need to look first into the woman's identity. There are several clues throughout that point to who she actually is. The first test subject, O1, to be created at the facility. The biggest being not just that there was another unaccounted for subject before O2, based on the three missing embryos seen in storage, but it's all about that big time jump from one day after the extinction to then 37 and a half years later, skipping right over the first subject's development, our story following O3 as we know. And around 38 years does sound about right for the woman woman's age. Unless the woman was lying, which she was prone to do. O1 was birthed and then delivered to the human camp at the mines to be raised by, well, humans, who, as she said, eventually turned against each other when times got difficult. Then several years later, O3 was raised entirely by mother, well fed and protected from any harm, in complete contrast with the others. Even though she did lie about there being other humans around, this was part of the test as well, seeing how she would react to the woman's arrival, and ultimately learning that while mother wasn't truthful, she still did raise raise her into being something special. O3, through her experience with O1, learns that humans aren't really that great, following what mother says about them only looking out for their own selfish gain. And this is exactly what O1 is seen doing time and time again, lying to O3 many times just to get what she wants. She does feel that she is doing the right thing by getting O3 out of the facility, thinking that she should be with other humans, not the droid that she already doesn't trust, thinking it's incapable of true feelings. But again, I think otherwise. Yes, I know, she did to destroy all of humanity, which is definitely a dick move. But as we saw with the crop fields, she had already begun putting things back together. And she also succeeded in her most important mission that caused her to destroy us in the first place, which was to facilitate the necessary next step in humanity, something she actually achieved with O3. It was thanks entirely to her accelerated and specific program that allowed O3 to become someone who really is superior to humanity. I mean, again, she was performing full on surgeries by age 18 or whatever, like freaking Doogie Howser or something. Thing. And it was through her interaction with O1 that she came to learn the unfortunate truth about current humans unable to see the bigger picture beyond themselves. The entire scheme was orchestrated by Mother, including O1's return, all part of this task to show her what humans are really like. This was, of course, O1's purpose that Mother referred to before executing her. She kept her alive until the time came that she needed her to play the part in her plan. And now that it is complete, there is no longer a reason to keep her alive. For example, there was a whole bullet matching fiasco where they ended up not matching. The truth was most likely that the woman was shot by a dozer, and since Mother controls them as well, the purpose was to drive her to the facility, which led to O3's biggest test proving that she is capable of creating a new, better world. That's why Mother relents in the end. She too now knows that she achieved her goal, and thusly leaves O3 alone to do things her own way, confident that things will be better going forward. The daughter had passed Mother's ultimate test, which about wraps it up for this ending explained for I Am Mother. So it turns out, unsurprisingly, that a robot uprising takes down humanity. We all know that's what will ultimately destroy us. But hey, at least Mother was doing it for a good reason, right? 
because we suck so much in the first place. <laughs> Lousy humans. Though we did build her in the first place too. Hmm, seems like kind of our fault as usual. Anyway, don't forget you can send me requests for anything you'd like to see me cover by sending them my way on any of my social media accounts at Foundflix. What did you guys think of I Am Mother and its ending? Do you think that she made the right choice in the end? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Make sure to like, subscribe, and follow. Thanks for watching Foundflix. See you next time. Mother!